Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, your number one source for income-oriented investing. Welcome to episode 43 in my monthly series where I quickly review the stock market in the last 30 days and of course review some of the most popular high-yield income-oriented funds on the Canadian and American stock market. We'll see how they're doing, if there's any news or updates, and of course, we'll try to determine what sectors or funds in particular are undervalued, presenting a good buying opportunity this month in October. So forget about MSNBC or BNN. If you're an income-focused investor, this is the place to be. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Adrian, and the primary objective of my income-oriented investing style and strategy is really to generate relatively safe, consistent, passive income forever. And one important aspect of my strategy, and really all investing strategy for that matter, is to invest consistently over time, right? If you do, you'll capture what's undervalued in the stock market, you'll dollar cost average, and of course, keep growing your passive income and your income stream over time. So remember, I am not against the more mainstream growth or dividend oriented strategies. These strategies work extremely well long term, and they're designed more for investors that really pr prioritize total return or growing dividends, my strategy in particular really prioritizes or focuses on maximizing cash flow. So without further ado, let's start the video. So before we get started, I'd like to take a quick moment to thank the sponsor of today's video. It's Harvest ETFs, which just recently launched HPYT, uh, the highest yielding uh, on the Canadian stock market, of course, the highest yielding U.S. long-term government bond covered call ETF on the Canadian stock market, HPYT, the Harvest Premium Yield Treasury ETF. So this ETF currently has over 15% yield. A bunch of uh, you know covered call U.S. bond ETFs have launched in Canada. You have H Bond from Hamilton Evolve la launched one called Bond. You have Horizons called LPay that just launched, but HPYT is the one with the highest yield over 15% yield right now. This is personally the one I invested in, $20,000 of my own money. I know I usually you know, don't reveal what I invest in this month uh, until the next portfolio unveil video, but I'm just giving you a little preview now. So this is the highest yielding one and it holds US government bonds long-term and they write covered calls on it, giving you a nice 15% yield. So make sure to check out this ETF and the uh, video I did where I discussed this ETF and review it in detail with Michael Kovacs, CEO of Harvest, just a few days ago. Make sure to check out that video. So let's check out the market. So the S&P 500, which is, you know, my opinion, the best indicator of how the overall U.S. market did in the last month, minus 3.25%. I am filming this, by the way, on October 6th. The stock market is still open. That's why you saw it just change there. So the U.S. market is, you know, relatively down. You know, the CNN gauge uh, went to extreme fear uh, in the last couple of days. But the real story, in my opinion, is the Canadian stock market. So this is the S&P TSX Composite Index, probably the best index to see how the overall Canadian market is doing, down 4.77%. So the Canadian market really taking a hit in the last 30 days. We know that the Canadian market is very, very cyclical has mostly financials and energy, utilities, materials, all of these have gone down and we'll try to figure out uh, you know, which funds we could actually invest in, of course, right now to capitalize. So like we do every single month, let's review some of the most popular income oriented funds that use cover cost strategies, leverage, well, some of them do, some of them don't on the Canadian market. So we'll start with the broad based overall ones. Of course, we're gonna start with HDIF, so HDIF, from Harvest ETFs, this is uh, their all-in-one solution which combines seven Harvest covered call ETFs all in one package with 25% leverage. One of my favorite funds. I have $100,000 of my own money in this one, by the way. What a great time to snatch this one up, guys. Almost 12% yield, just under 12% yield. It's up a little bit today, so it's probably 11.65 or something like that, but a great time to buy HDIF. Harvest is known for consistent distributions. They've also raised their distribution by 20% on their technology ETF, HTA, which is one of the ETFs inside of it. I talked to Michael Kovacs about it in last Sunday's video, so make sure to check it out. I also asked him, hey, is this new HPYT ETF with 15% yield going to be added to HDIF? 
check out that video to see his, his response. HYLD and HDIV from Hamilton ETFs, of course, the all-in-one ETFs that started it all, HDIV being the OG. So HYLD just follows the overall American stock market, gone down as well, over 12% yield right now. Distributions have not changed. They're still remaining pretty stable at 12 cents for the last five, six months. And I do have a strong suspicion, everyone, that there's going to be big changes to HYLD because Hamilton is launching two brand new covered call ETFs, part, part of their yield maximizer series, SMAX and QMAX. Of course, expect a video to cover these two ETFs in detail. But in short, it's going to be pretty much their own S&P 500 covered call ETF or something along those lines and their own NASDAQ or technology covered call ETF. So I have a feeling they're going to be putting those in HYLD. Maybe they're going to even put H bond in HYLD, which is, uh, you know, competition to HPYT with over 10% yield, a little bit less yield than HPYT because they're doing less covered calls in HPYT. So uh, HYLD, definitely a good pickup here. HDIV, also a great pickup. This one is just doing really, really well in terms of performance. This one is not a pure covered call all in one. Don't forget that they have HFIN and HUTs, which are not covered call ETF. So there is a little portion that's growth in here, but a really nice balance, growing divot, growing distributions now at 14 cents a month. They've just been uh, doing really, really well. This has a nice combination of a lot of different sector focused covered call ETFs, energy, financials, technology, healthcare, gold, hence the name, right? Sector uh, enhanced multi-sector cover call ETF. Now you have two new players when it comes to the broad-based all-in-ones here uh, from Horizons. You have USCL, which is basically the entire US market. You have CNCL, the entire Canadian market. I think these are very simple, very amazing new covered call ETFs that use 25% leverage. Of course, there's non-leveraged ones as well, right? CNCC, USCC don't have the cover calls, but you're going to get less um, sorry, don't have the leverage. It doesn't have the leverage, but you're going to get less yield. So CNCL, almost a 14% yield. Absolutely incredible here. A great option for Canada because Canada has gone down. Then you have USCL, which is a 14.5% yield. Pretty crazy. So these are obviously great pickups. Let's be honest. Everything is on sale this month. And also um, Horizons does also have QQCC, which is just the NASDAQ. And they are recently going to be launching very shortly QQCL, which is a leveraged version. So QQCL will be added to the mix in next month as one of the broad based ones. Then when it comes to the more boring, but the more stable and more defensive ones, you have BMAX, which has a little bit of fixed income in there. No news on this one, right? The distributions have remained a steady uh, 10 cents a month. Yields a little bit lower, a little over 10, but this is definitely going to one be the one if you're more of a defensive investor that doesn't like much volatility. It would be BMAX, great one to add in your portfolio. And also ZWQT, if you really are more of a conservative investor, this is BMOs all in one covered call ETF that has all of BMOs or most of all of BMOs uh, covered call ETFs wrapped into one. So that's it for ETFs. We'll look at the sector specific ones that I think are on sale or the sectors that are undervalued at the end. Let's just go through the closed end funds and split funds. First, you have EIT, still the king, trading right now at a very, very tiny discount, right? Nav is 1249. You can pick it up for 1243. Uh, this is probably from yesterday's date here. Um, doing, doing really well. Split funds, so lots of action on split funds, everyone. Lots of sales. Remember, don't invest in split funds if you don't understand them and you can't take the volatility. These are very, very volatile because they're very highly leveraged. Not 25%, more along the lines of 50 to 75% leverage, even more. The lower they go, the more there's a leverage effect. So DGS, their flagship uh, split fund, the, the biggest one they have is right now trading at a discount. You could buy it for 415. This is, of course, October 5th. Uh, numbers, right? Yesterday's numbers, uh, it's worth 437. So yes, it's not paying right now, but if you get in at these prices and when they do start paying, your yield will be astronomical over, I think like 25%, right? Let's say you buy it at 415. I'm just curious now, what is the yield if it does start paying and you book it at that price? 28.91% yield. That is the yield you're going to get when it starts paying if you pick it up at 415. It's absolutely a joke. It's comical almost. GDV, a great time to pick it up, guys. Look at that premium. It's so small, right? It's worth 731. You could pick some up for 806. So it is trading at a premium, a very, very, very small premium. 
almost a 15% yield. Absolutely incredible. Even, you know, LBS, SBC at premiums, LCS, OSP, too specific. I tend to not stay away from them. But hey, if you like insurance companies, LCS is an option. PWI, look at that, 17% yield just on the cusp of not paying. Um, but obviously, people are, have already sold it off because you could pick some up at 470 when it's worth 509. So this is another one trading at a small discount as well. So a lot of fear in the split fund world, and this is the time to pick them up. DFN is definitely the one, though, that's getting my attention right, right now in terms of, you know, the most, you know, DGS as well, uh, the most opportunity. You have the latest numbers that came out here, the latest numbers. This is as of September 29th, so maybe it's a little bit lower. Maybe it's $4, but right now, today, I just checked the price. It's trading at about $4, so it's very, very, very rare. I personally almost never seen DFN trade on par or at a discount. So, it, you know, I checked today, it's like up 8%. So you got to expect big price swings. But if you're, you know, if you, you're a more of a higher risk tolerance investor and you still like quality stocks, DFN's a good pickup. FDN, I'm watching very, very closely. I think this is the one I'm going to gravitate to to invest $5,000 this month. We'll have to see what happens. $6.13, the NAV of the Class A shares, probably around $6, even less now. So we're getting closer to that, to that point of uh, that unit NAV of 15. But FTN just took a beating. Great time to pick it up. I think the yield's like over 20% now if you pick it up. Uh, middle field, same thing, especially RS. I've almost never seen a premium so small. I mean, it's worth 1021. You could pick it up for 1090. Uh, it's worth 1021. You could pick it up for 1091. So it's still trading at a small premium, but the premium is very small. REITs and real estate has taken a beating lately. I think now, is the, if you want to get in some real estate, perfect time to pick up RS. This is a leveraged investment in the, some of the top REITs, mostly in Canada. Even ENS just came out, just talked to Rob Lozon, CIO of Enbridge. Oh, wow. CIO of of Middlefield, who recently spoke to the CEO of Enbridge, and uh, we discussed is the dividend safe because Enbridge took a beating, which means ENS took even more of a beating because it's a leveraged investment in Enbridge. So a great time to pick it up as well, like over 14% yield on ENS, very, very strong unit nav, still above $19, so way higher than that $15 threshold, not in danger of missing dividends anytime soon, even RS, right? Over $20 unit now. So great time for split fund guys. If you're more of a high risk tolerance, you could stomach more volatility, some great yields with the split funds. Uh, Bitcoin, when it comes to crypto, been doing pretty good the last 30 days, I think. Uh, BTCY, ETHY, consistent dividends. They haven't changed in, in a really long time. I personally pick some up in my RSP, the, the US versions, the .U. Not the US version, but the USD version, the .U versions, which have 19, 20% yield. But uh, big news could be coming. You know, we're all waiting for the, that spot Bitcoin ETF approval or not. So I'm waiting. If it gets approved, it'll probably shoot to the moon. We'll see. If it doesn't, it gets rejected. Bitcoin's probably going to crash, which means a great opportunity to buy some more Bitcoin and Ether here. I personally would only buy it with the covered calls, of course. So sectors that are undervalued everyone mostly in the canadian space financials uh utilities golds uh, all undervalued so of course if you want just canada in general i think probably cncl is a great option it's a no-brainer it's literally the tsx 60 with covered calls and leverage you have a beautiful over 13 percent yield but if you want to go a little bit more specific take a little more risk for higher reward uh, you have the financials or Canadian financial specific covered call ETFs. The highest yielding one by far is BKCL. Look at this yield. Incredible. Not a split fund. 17.49%. It's pretty much a joke. There's a million options out there. Let's be honest. You have BKCL. You have uh, Bank, which is over 16% yield. Uh, this one has a little bit more than just the six banks. You have HMAX, almost 16% yield. A small, you know, note that they did reduce their distribution a tiny, tiny, tiny bit on this one. When I meet with them, I'll ask them why they decided to do that. Uh, you also have CBNK recently did a video and a Q&A with the CEO of Malva Hill. This is a very unique covered call ETF because they use 25% leverage, but there's 100% upside because they're only doing the options, the covered calls on that leverage 25%. So you get full 100% upside if the six banks go up. Very, very unique 
ETF here if you don't like the con of the cover call ETF. You want you like the higher yield, but you don't want to give up upside. CBNK could be a very interesting ETF for you. Then, of course, the U.S. banks are still on sale. Call is the highest yielding one. I mean, like 15, 14, 15 percent yield right now. This one doesn't even have any leverage. Absolutely uh, mind blowing here. ZWK from BMO. There's Hubble from um, Harvest. Remember that Hubble is one of the seven ETFs. Uh, inside of HDIF. So if you invest in HDIF, you're kind of getting indirect exposure, capitalizing on the U.S. banks. But even gold producers, guys, gold producers taking a beating. I don't understand why it's supposed to be when there's inflation, gold's supposed to do well. Don't know why it's down, but that's just gold for you. Almost 13% yield. Uh, this is the only one left, the two gold ETFs from Horizons, the only ones that don't have a leverage versions. I wish GLCL would come out. You'll probably have 15, 16% yield, uh, but maybe they will. You, we'll, we'll have to see what happens. I mean, utilities are on sale, guys. You could get UMAX, you could get from Hamilton. There's HTAE from, oh no, sorry, I took the wrong one. It would be this one here. Uh, brand tech H U T E. Here is the leveraged uh, utility one from Harvest, eleven point forty six percent yield. I mean, of course, the, um, the cover call U S government bond. A bunch of them came out. There's bond from Evolve. There's H bond from Hamilton. There's L Pay from Horizons. All have about ten percent yield, but no one could really come close to HPYT that has 15% yield. And this, you know, they all kind of do the same thing, hold the same thing, but it, each, uh, Harvest decided to go a little bit more with the cover calls, a little bit more aggressive on the cover calls. But I will point out that um, Evolve has waived the management fee until March 31st. So this one will have 0% management fee. The rest all have 0.45% 40, management fee. So Guys, I mean, I'm out of breath. I mean, the opportunity is really great. When I look at that CNN gauge and I see extreme fear and fear, I see opportunity and extreme opportunity. That's what you, you we need to do as long-term investors. Don't give in to the fear. Don't be a sheep. So that's the Canadian landscape. Let's check out the American landscape. Let's check out the U.S. stock market now. All right, let's check out what's going on the U.S. market, on the U.S. stock market when it comes to the income landscape. Let's start with QYLD, RYLD, XYLD. So still no surprises. Still going to get about 1% a month here based on the NAV. Latest distribution, a little bit less on QYLD. The next one's probably going to be a little bit less as well because it's 1681. So expect about a 16.8 cent distribution next month. Uh, remember, you could see you know exactly the, pr the the premium they're doing here. They're they're making every month, and they give out a maximum of one percent. So, QYLD, RYLD, XYLD, guys. This is really if you're this, you're super pessimistic. You think the market is never gonna go up again. You think the Nasdaq 100 is not gonna go up, and th this is what you would invest in if you're an income oriented investor. R RYLD, same type of story here. Uh, distribution gone down a little bit. Uh, but you know, if they make at least 2% premium every month, you're going to get at least 1%, which means more or less 1% of whatever the, the, the nav is here. So it would be, you know, 16.62 cents, uh, XYLD, which is the S and P 501 distribution, uh, a lot smaller than, than last month. That's, you know, volatility has been lowered. You could actually see the chart here. So that's it for these three, these three really designed guys for super pessimistic investors that are willing to give up all the upside of the S&P 500, of the Russell, of the uh, NASDAQ 100. Uh, but I personally think that these these ones are a bit better because they capture some upside. So Jeppy, the biggest, most popular covered call ETF in the world, I think. Uh, distribution is a little bit higher than last month, which is welcome news. Uh, so yeah, very, very good ETF here, classic. JetQ, this is the NASDAQ one. Uh, distribution a little bit smaller, but you know, very high yield, very pretty. I mean, pretty much identical to the yield of QYLD now with, with less management fee. So, I think JetQ is a really, really good one, uh, a replacement for QYLD if ever you have it. But, um, what I'm most excited about is the new ones from the Finance ETFs, which basically do what the Yield Max ETFs do on single stocks, they are doing on the index. So, QQQY, NASDAQ 100 index. Jeppy with a Y, obviously they're going after Jeppy, right? And competing with them is the S&P 500. Look at the first distribution that was declared. Absolutely incredible. 90 cents on Jeppy, 55% yield. 
and a dollar was a dollar ten, I think, for QQQY, 67% yield. I mean, this is just mind blowing to me. I think that uh, JP Morgan and Global X should definitely be worried because these ones look to me, you know, I I'm going when, in the retirement accounts, I'm going to be getting these for sure. I think these are going to be core positions of mine. I'm absolutely stoked and excited. I think these are the two most in the income world the two most important inventions and, and innovative ETFs that came out uh, in 2023 by far. So it's Jay Pesticelli is managing these, the options, the same guy who manages the Yieldmax ETF. Very, very similar, same concept, except they're using daily options instead of weekly options. Very, very innovative. This is, you know, daily options are very, very new. I think you could only do daily options on the indexes for now. They will have a Russell 2000 uh, one coming out as well. You also have Spy Eye from NEOS, which is a great alternative to consider when it comes to the S&P 500. So against XYLD and JEPI and this other JEPI, very consistent 1% yield a month here, but you do capture some upside. So this one is, you know, the performance has done pretty well, very, very close to the S&P 500. So definitely a competitor to JEPI here, another one to consider. So in the US, there's a lot of more, you know, covered calls, not really that popular, but they do it more on the indexes, of course, except for yield, yield max, right? They do it on all those single stocks. SVOL, just the king, the best alternative income here, still going strong. Distribution has been 30 cents a month for the last uh, couple of months. They lowered it from 32 cents to 30 cents. Um, do you guys want another video where I interview Silesh from Simplify? I had him on the channel twice. He told me he's always willing to come back and talk about SVOL. I think they did a small strategy shift. So let me know in the comment section below if you want me to get Silesh back on and talk about SVOL again. Uh, this is a great one for sure. Then you have the fixed income ones, the bond ones, TLTW, which on the Canadian side, they're all trying to copy. There's, there's four or five ETFs that have come out all trying to kind of replicate what T TLTW does. Now is a great time to buy it. If interest rates go up again, TLTW and TLT will go down again. But I mean, this one has been taking a beating because interest rates going up means the current long-term bonds go down. But when interest rates start getting cut, that's going to be good news for TLTW. So they're writing uh, covered calls on TLT here. Recent distributions have been, you know, they will vary greatly every single month. The newest one was a little bit less than the last one, 28 cents instead of 33 cents. You have corporate, you have the same thing on investment grade corporate bonds. Well, LQDW does cover calls on LQD. This one, I think the distribution actually went up a little bit. Yeah, 38 cents to 40 cents. Then you have the best performing one, the, which is the least popular one, of course, just a junk bond one, the high yield corporate bond one, HYGW. And uh, yeah, a little bit lower as well, 39 cents to 36 cents. So the one year performance is out. This one has been doing the best one, by the way, compared to the other ones, minus 4% and TLT minus 12%, of course, the, the worst performing one. So if you want to add fixed income as an income investor, now you have this, these three options. Uh, very reliable because it's BlackRock, very low management fee, especially the, the first two. I think they're, what, 35, 34 basis points, 35 basis points, and the uh, junk bond one's a little bit higher. So great options here. Moving on to the fun stuff. Yieldmax just announced their distributions for October. You see that here. So the Tesla one, which is our most popular one, pretty much the same, OARC, a little bit lower. But Apple, uh, Amazon, Facebook, all big increases. I guess that's because of volatility. NVIDIA, uh, lower. Um, and uh, Netflix, much higher. Google, much higher. Their Coinbase one, look at this monstrous monthly distribution, $1.20. Keep in mind, you know, I personally think it's never going to be $1.20 ever again. So the Coinbase one, the stock is even much more volatile than Tesla, believe it or not. So I think this is going to definitely have some of the highest yields. I have 10 grand in Coney, uh, but I doubt it will ever be a buck 20 because I think that this is like a, a month and a half's worth of dividends. So maybe next month's going to be more like a dollar. Then, of course, you have the super boring stocks like Microsoft, Disney, Exxon and JP Morgan. You could expect, you know, obviously lower distributions. So uh, Clip also a little bit lower, the latest distribution, uh, 76 cents instead of the uh, 83 cents. That was it in the last uh, three months here. So that's it for ETFs. 
lot more ETFs and competition coming on the covered cover call space in uh, the US market as well, finally. So uh, it's not just QYLD, RYLD, and XYLD anymore, and JEPI and JEPQ. We're getting much more options. But again, in terms of broad based, I think these two are definitely the one to keep your eye on. These are, I mean, I've never been so excited about new ETFs in my life. And by the way, if you haven't seen the video yet from last Sunday or, or two Sundays ago, where I talked to the CEO about these ETFs, make sure to check it out. I'm definitely gonna have her back on and probably Jay back on to talk about these again. Moving on to quickly to close them funds, you have CLM right now at a 25% premium. So I, you know, I probably wouldn't pick this one up. Remember guys, CLM, certain brokers, you could drip it at NAV. That is my, my personal opinion, the most powerful thing at CLM because it's always trading at a freaking premium. If you're dripping at NAV, this is the stock price, this is the NAV price. You're buying, you're dripping it at this price instead of this price, 24% cheaper than stock price. Very, very powerful, but only select few big US brokers actually drip it on that. You gotta find out which your broker. If you want an all-in-one solution that captures like kind of all the closed end funds, you have YYY, you have CEFS ETF, you also have HIPS, which I haven't shown on my uh, picks of the month for a while, but this is also a great one. I really like the diversification with this one. You have about a 10% yield. It's not just closed end funds. What's cool about this one is you have portfolio of MLPs, REITs, closed end funds, asset management, and BDC. So this is kind of like an, an all-in-one alternative income uh, ETF, right? You have that here, four alternative income categories, MLPs, REITs, BDCs, closed end funds. So, you know, maybe an alternative to YYY or something to keep with YYY if you're interested in the closed end fund space which is very undervalued in my opinion. My personal favorite one is RIB. This is a closed end fund that's actually trading at a discount. So this is a closed end fund that holds many closed end funds and BDCs and SPACs and things like that that are trading at discounts, but RIB itself is trading at almost a 10% discount. So yes, you look at the stock chart, you'll just see it going off a cliff, but because closed end funds are mostly in fixed income and they're leveraged, fixed income has got killed, Mortgages have got killed, mortgage-backed securities. There's a lot of stuff in, in uh, those cl asset classes in, in RIV and closed end funds in general. Add leverage and you're going down more. So great buying opportunity. Of course, you have RA when it comes to the specific closed end funds that I don't really cover on the channel anymore because there's so many of them, right? BlackRock has a lot of them, PIMCO, Nuveen, there's a million of them. But RA trading at a very big discount because of the dividend distribution reduction. So you, you could pick it up for 1230 when it's worth... $2 more than that. So it's very rare that you see a, such a big discount on RA. Of course, everyone panicked, sold and sold it. Um, but if ever you believe in real assets, then there's, you know, there is a lot of mortgage backed securities in there. I know many of you don't like it. RA could definitely be a good opportunistic pickup. So that's it on the US market. Not much news. And there's because there's not many sector based covered call ETFs, uh, you know, but it's more the Canadian market this month, I have to say. The Canadian sectors, utilities, gold, and financials that are suffering the most. But the U.S. market, I just feel like the best thing is stick with the broad-based funds. And if you like single stocks and high yield, yield max are amazing. You, you know, you could invest in the, the, the stocks you like and get income. But I mean, I'm most excited by far. QQQY and JEPI, which by the way are going growing very rapidly. You see 56 million already for a three-week ETF. Pretty incredible. Uh, JEPI's at 22 million. Last time I looked, it was 10, so it just doubled. So yes, there are new ETFs, but these are very, very innovative and I'm very excited about them. So that's it for the review of the Canadian and US stock market. Hope this was enjoyable and useful for you. See you next time. Hey, don't go yet. A few reminders before you leave. Did you know that I launched a YouTube loyalty membership program where for only $3 a month, you could become a PII Inner Circle member where you will gain access to exclusive content, exclusive videos and live streams, as well as other perks and benefits, including a really cool weekly opportunity report. That's right. If you're interested, just click on the little join button next to the subscribe button to see what it's all about. Also, make sure to follow me on Blossom and download Blossom. It's a social investing app, which is really cool. You could share your portfolio, follow other people's portfolios, including my own. My username is Adrian underscore PII. So download it with the referral link below. Not only is it free, but you could actually earn cash by taking these really small, quick one minute courses. Really awesome. It's a no brainer. 
Also, make sure to visit our website, PassiveIncomeInvesting.ca. That's where you could book a one-on-one -on -one private coaching session with yours truly, with myself, where you could ask me all the questions you want. All the information and booking information is on the website. Make sure to check out that video on the homepage there to see how to book a one-on-one -on -one properly. Also on my website, you could purchase my digital product, which I'm very proud of, the Ultimate DIY Investing Package. This is a reference tool or a companion tool that will help you build your own portfolio. So it has lists of funds, it has sample portfolios, and it covers both the Canadian and US stock markets. And the good news is you'll only ever have to buy it once because it comes with free lifetime updates. And my plan is really to update the version every single year. So make sure to pick it up. Also, I have Questrade and Passive referral links below. So Questrade is the broker that I personally use and Passive is the broker companion tool or companion or assistant that I use. Really cool program, really cool software. So I have referral links for both of those. Questrade, $50 of free trades. And passive, I have half off for the elite membership. If you're interested in the elite membership, and even if you want to start out with the free membership and upgrade to the elite afterwards, use my referral code so you could still get that 50% off. And don't forget that the elite membership of passive is 100% free if you use Questrade. For social media, we have a very successful and big Facebook group, private Facebook group with over 14,000 members where we all try to help each other out. So make sure to join that group. Information is, in, is below. We also have Instagram where you could follow us or more personal stuff uh, when it comes to our life here in Panama. And there's LinkedIn as well. So as usual, everyone, how do I leave you? Continue to stay safe, stay healthy, and of course, stay passive. See you next time.